Okay. Okay. Hello um, to my television audience <laughs> watching the recording and a few people who are live. Uh, we have a chapter five quiz on well next week. The way it's going to be distributed is still up in the air. I need to talk to Powers at Beats. How do I have a 20 minute or 30 minute quiz? When, uh, yeah, I, I have no clue how this works. Um, there's going to be a web work part. I know how that works, and, and that's not timed. And then this actual quiz where you write down answers somehow on a piece of paper and then email me a picture. I'll figure that out and send you all instructions. But for now, let's review some Chapter 5 stuff. Zoom. And a lot of this is going to be memory lane. So we can have questions and set theory. This is from the beginning of the chapter. Um, so suppose we have a universe of five elements. We have the set S containing three, three letters and set T containing these three letters. It might be good to draw a picture. Look to see, is there anything in common in these two sets? We're like, yeah, the C's in common. Is that the only thing that they have in common? Looks like that is the case. So what else should be in the left wedgie? Well, there's a B and a D. And what should be in this right wedgie? Well, we have an A and an E. And is there anything outside the circle? A, B, C, D, E is the universe. The whole universe is... So there's nothing outside the circle. So immediately we can answer this question. This is empty because this is everything outside of the union S union T. So this picture, if we were to shade it, looks like, well, S union T is everything inside the circles. So if I prime that, I'm looking at this. So we clearly see the answer to that is empty. And this, what does this mean? Well, we want to be outside of T and inside of T. So outside of, so outside of S, so outside of the S bubble, outside of the S bubble, so this is all outside, and inside of T. Well, clearly that's just A and E. A and E. Easy as pie. Okay, some true-false questions. Is 5 an element of the set containing 3, 5, 7? Duh, yeah. Because we can see it. There it is. Is the set containing 1, 3 a subset of the set containing 1, 2, 3? Duh, yeah. Okay, I'm going to say duh, yeah, for things that are like duh. <laughs> because there they are. There they are. 1, 2, 1, and 3. Um, this is not a duh. Zero an element of the empty set? No, the empty set is empty. So there can't be anything in it, including something like zero. Is the empty set a subset of this set? This is true by, it's vacuously true. Like, there's nothing in here. So everybody who lives in this house also lives in this house because nobody lives in this house. Oh, memory lane. The number one is not an element of the set containing the number one. I'm going to just say true, not duh, true. Because, uh, sorry, false. <laughs> um, this is definitely false. There it is. We can see it. One is an element of um, the set containing one. And now this question is true, but not like duh, yeah. It's more like every set is a subset of itself. When we have this symbol, we just need to look and see does everybody in the left house also live in the right house? In this case, yes, everybody here also lives there. True. Um, trick question here now. There looks to be four elements, but no. The two is repeated, so false. The size of A is only three. So if those are the questions on the quiz, boom, you're good. Homer tonight has a question like this. So if we have one of those paper quizzes, I will, like, but that's timed somehow, I will write this so you don't have to memorize it. So it's an N and choose K, A to the N minus K times B to the K. Of course, this might not mean anything to you. And if that's the case, then maybe 
also I might write the following. When k is 0, I replace my kkk with 0, 0, 0. So we have n choose 0, a to the n minus 0, and b to the 0. I'm not going to write b to the 0 because that's just number 1. And then when k is 1, then I have n choose 1, a to the n minus 1, b to the 1. I won't write the 1 there because it's traditional not to. And then when k is 2, we have n choose 2, a to the n minus 2, b to the 2, yada, 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 until the last term when k is the number n itself. Then we have n choose n, a to the n minus n, but n minus n is the number 0. Cursor go away. So I won't write a to the 0, but b to the n I will write. So the key with the homework you tonight in these problems is to look at this and say to ourselves, what is A, what is B, and what is N? And A is clear. A is to the left, like to the left of the plus symbol, 3x. And then B is the thing to the right of the plus symbol. But then you're going to say, there is no plus symbol. Well, then it's negative 2y. That's what B is. What is n? It's the thing that's like hovering over the right parenthesis. Now, to know where in this long expansion um, we find x to the fourth y cubed, this should be in red. The trick, well, it's not really a trick, but is to observe that k is the exponent of y. So we have a 3 there. So I really want to raise this b, this b to the third power. So when is b to the third power? It would be the term right after this, um, right after this term. So we can observe that. Um, let's do green for like joy and love. So n is 7, and I know I have a, which is 3x to a power, and I have b, which is negative 2y, to the power of k. k, that's why this thing is key. k is 3, because that's where we're getting that. We're getting it from here. k is 3. The power of a, well, the numbers here have to add up to 7. So this is obviously 4. And we can also get that from that number. And then what's down here? It's still k. So a 3 goes here, and then we're done. And we might be uh, find it useful to go to Pascal's triangle to get um, all of these things. I probably should have taken this out earlier. And I will put Pascal's triangle on the quiz. So. 7 choose 3 is 7 choose 0, choose 1, choose 2, choose 3. 35. 35 times 3 to the 4th times negative 2 to the 3rd. Maybe it's bad for me to use x's for times when x is a variable too. Negative 2 to the 3rd. And then we have x to the 4th, y to the 3rd. And now we just take a calculator and jam all these things together and realize that this is negative 22,680 to the fourth y cubed. So this is the answer. The answer is the coefficient. It's asking for the coefficient. Please don't box the whole thing with the variables. That is incorrect. It's asking for what is the coefficient. The coefficient is the number next to the x to the fourth y cubed. Boom. So this is the homework due tonight. It's super duper easy. Um, if we just let A equal whatever is there, B be whatever is there, and N be the exponent. Okay. How many subsets of the set A, B, C, D, E do not contain the letter C? This is exactly like the pizza problems. Say there's five pizza toppings. These are pizza toppings, right? And I want to know how many possible ways can I get these pizza toppings. Um, I can order, I can choose um, none of the five or one of the five or two of the five. 
but not really because we're saying does not contain the letter C. So this is like the pizza problem. Um, I think it's due tonight that says you can't order – they ran out of pepperoni. So we ran out of like the letter C. Now how many subsets of A, B, D, E? Subsets. Well, we can case one, choose none of the four. That would be the empty set, right? Or case two, and I'm going to add because we're doing cases, so addition happens. I can choose one of the four, like the second containing A, or the second containing B, or the second containing D, or the second containing E. Or I can choose two of the four, or I can choose three of the four, or I can choose all four of the four, which is exactly this one set. So these numbers by Pascal's triangle is one, four, six, four, one. I can either add them up or note that the fourth row of Pascal's triangle sums due to the power of four, which is 16. 16 subsets of this set here do not contain the letter C. Oh, I wish I had my juice box. All good. Um, okay. Oh, actually, maybe if you're writing that, let's keep that up here because this question is kind of related. So, question five How many different tips could you leave in a restaurant? You can't go to restaurants anymore. I'm oh, sorry, I just got sad for a moment. If you had a nickel, a dime, a quarter, and a half dollar. So yeah, you're pretty cheap of what you leave, but this is just a math problem. Okay. So let's see. You have a nickel, a dime, a quarter, a half dollar. Maybe you can just throw down all four of these coins and it's the biggest you can leave. Or you can choose to you can choose to like None of the four coins. That's a zero. <laughs> That's a terrible tip. Um, or you can one of the four coins, give them a nickel or give them a dime or give them a quarter or give them a half dollar. Or you can choose two of the coins or you can choose three of the coins or you can choose all four of the coins. It's the biggest tip you can give, which is 75 cents, 85, 90 cents. Cheap tip. In any case, that's the amount of number of different tips you can leave, 16, same as previous problem. So again, this is just like pizza topping problems. Okay, let's get a little violent. Uh, question, in a survey of 275 gangbangers, we asked them which weapons they liked the best. It is found that 62 like atomic bombs, 91 like knives, 56 like guns, 28 like the bombs and knives, 21 like the bombs and guns, 25 like knives and guns, 12 of the gangbangers like all three weapon choices. Oh, how awesome of those 12. I mean, to be that open-minded. How many of the 275 gangbangers do not like any of the three weapons? Good question, because um, weapons are, well, just killing is bad. First, draw Sven's diaphragm and then answer the question. So there definitely will be a question like this on the quiz, because this has been fundamental to what we've been doing. OK, we drew three circles. We have to decide which one's which. I'm going to call this one, since atomic bombs came first, A. We'll call this knives, and let's call this guns. With all these questions, we first see if there's something in the dead center. Twelve. Twelve people like all of those. So now it is wise to see uh, what pack. This whole football has to equal whatever A and K is. Atomic bombs and knives has to be 8. So up here has to be this plus this equals 28. So this number is forced to be 16. And you know what I'm going to do? I think you would learn a lot more if you did this yourself later on. Um, 
people in the room and people outside. And I just told you the answer is going to eventually be 128 here and 13 here. So try to do that on your own later. If you don't get those answers, then you did something wrong. Okay. There's a lot of questions. That's why I'm going to just move on. Move it on. Move it on. Exercise left for Satan. Sorry, students. That's what the S stands for. Students. Um, okay. So this problem is about um, the Choral Society and the Drama Club are holding a joint party. Not marijuana, but like they're getting together to have a party together. A joint party. Of the 60 people attending, 40 are members of the Choral Society and 30 are members of the Drama Club. How many are members of both groups? Aha! Definitely ask a question like this, and I can also impose do it two different ways, um, just so that you I know that you're bilingual or math bilingual. So remember the inclusion-exclusion formula. That's a thing involving two sets. Well, let's see. We have a set called Choral Society and a set called Drama Club. So the inclusion-exclusion set, the union, the number of things in the union of C union D, choral or drama, is equal to the number of elements in the choral society plus the number of elements in the drama club minus the number of elements in both. The choral society intersect the drama club. So then we look at these four numbers. These are four numbers, and hopefully three of them are in here. If three of them aren't, we're SOL. <laughs> so do we have this? Do we know the number of people in choral or drama? Well, let's see. We only have three numbers, 60, 40, and 30. 60 people are attending, and everyone presumably is either choral or drama, because why would they be there otherwise? So choral or drama must be 60. Do the words tell us the number of people in choral? Yes, it says 40. Does the words tell us the number of people in drama club? Yep, it says 30. And the words doesn't tell us who are in both groups because that's what the damn question is asking. So we do uh, trivial math here. We have 60 equals 70 minus the size of C intersect D. So just by observing, 60 is less than 70, so I have to subtract 10. That means that the number of people that are in choral and drama must be 10. So that's one way to do it. The other, another alternate way to do it is Sven's diaphragm. Um, so we draw blah 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 here. We have two circles. We have C and D. And now I told you that this is what you do when we already know the center, but we're trying to figure out the center. So this is not the optimal way to do this problem with pictures because we don't know the center. But how do you do it anyways with pictures? Well, we know we have sections X, Y, and Z. Let's just, we don't know these numbers yet, but we do know that X plus Y is the number of people in coral, which is 40 people. And Y plus Z, is the number of drama, which we know is 30. And then we also know that the union, all of this added together, better be everybody who came to the room, everybody who came to the joint party. That's 60. So you have to do algebra here. Like that's, I mean, that's the only way to do this, this problem. We know, for instance, x plus y is 40. So for instance, this being equal to 40 means that z has to be, um, has to be uh, 20. But if z is 20, then y equals 10 is forced. So as far as showing your work, this is like crazy talk, but I will understand your arrows. <laughs> I mean, if you understand what I did here, I will understand it too if you did something similar. It's not the most elegant way to do this, but this works. 
why is 10 a source? Then again, the Benz diagram method or Spence diaphragm is best if I already know the center, then you move out. If you don't know the center already, it's really hard. You have to do stuff like this. Um, so why why is the intersection? So we say that's um, the intersection of C and D is equal to 10 because that's where Y is. Okay. The next problem is exactly like the problem in the web work due last night that had like a bunch of math leads. Some were in Prof. Abba, that's me, my class, and some were in Prof. Professor Samay's class. And we had to pick a team that had some people from mine and some people from hers. This is exactly that problem. So if you understood that, then great. If you didn't, then this is how you do that problem. There are nine pugs and 10 bulldogs at the annual Dogs with Old Man Faces conference. That's a real thing. I didn't make that up. Um, or maybe I did. But check it out. Doesn't that look like an old man? Totally looks like an old man. OK. Um, OK, he looks like a man. <laughs> OK. Um, so we have nine pugs, 10 bulldogs at the annual dogs with old man faces conference. How many ways can we choose a team of five dogs if three must be pugs and two must be bulldogs? Well, step one, choose the pugs. Step two, choose the bulldogs. Choose the pugs and choose the bulldogs. Step one, step two, then use the multiplication principle. And whenever we say the word choose, choose means going to be doing this CNR jazz, right? That's what that little C, that big C is all about. Or, you know, we can write it like more mature, as I said, like that. And choose R, choose. So still, choose is in there. Okay, so step one, we want to choose um, three pugs. Well, how many pugs total do we have? Well, we have nine pugs. Choose Three of the nine pugs. Well, that can happen in nine choose three ways. And I'm going to go to Pascal's triangle. Pascal's triangle, nine choose zero, choose one, choose two, choose three, 84. That happens in 84 ways. Now step two, choose two of the, how many bulldogs do we have? It says 10, so 10 bulldogs. So we say 10 choose two. I don't need to show this to you anymore. It's 10 choose two is the number 45, 45 ways. And we take those by the multiplication principle. We have the total is 84 times 45, which equals 3,780 ways. That's how many ways we can choose a team of five dogs, which are pugs, two of which are both pugs. Okay, so let's get to a harder quiz question. Um, how many ways can we choose a team of five dogs if at least one must be a pug? So at least every time you see that, as I said before, think cases. So at least one pug. So I can have exactly one pug and or bulls, or I can have two pugs and three bulls or I can have three pugs and two bulls or four pugs and and one bull or all five can be pugs. That's four different cases. That's way too many. So we think about the opposite. We think about the opposite. So um, first of all, the universe is all possible teams, all possible teams of five dogs. 
And it's easy to calculate the universe. The size of the universe is the number of dogs. I'm choosing five of them. How many dogs total? We have nine pugs and ten, bull, nine pugs and ten bulldogs. So that's a big-ass number. 19 choose five. Um, I can't calculate that because my table's not big enough, but a calculator can. Um, so that's the number of possible teams, regardless of, like, how many of each. We're just picking 19 dogs. And so what we want to count um, is the – well, let's let E be the sum of teams with – no pugs at all. No pugs at all. So you mean, we meaning, i.e., we have five bulldogs. So you might say, well, that's not what the question is asking. Well, let's think about what E prime is. E prime is the opposite of this. If E is the teams with no pugs at all, then E must be the teams with at least one pug teams with at least one pug. So really, we want to know what E prime is. That's really what this question is asking. We want to know teams with at least one pug. The opposite of that is teams with no pugs at all. Now, by the way, it doesn't matter if I call E and E prime. Like, if I call E to be the set with teams with at least one pug, then E prime is the teams with um, no pugs at all. Right? It doesn't matter which one I got. I, I call which, but I know that I need to. The question is asking for the size of E prime. And as I said, if we counted E prime, it's going to be five different cases. How about this? Teams with no pugs at all? That's easy to count. There's only one case. I'm picking five bulldogs from ten bulldogs, right? So easily, easily, we count n of e to be the number 10. There's 10 below total. How many ways can I choose five? So that's it. We're done with this problem. All we need to do is that the answer e prime is the size of the universe minus the size of e. In other words, it's the size of the universe, which was 19 choose 5 minus the size of e, 10 choose 5. And I happen to have the answer there is 11,376. And this is exactly how that problem was with Samay's team and Abba's team for a team of mathletes. I gave the hint, and if you did something similar to this, you got the right answer. Incidentally, in Google, you could just type the word 19 choose 5, and it works. It's amazing what you can put in the search engine, and you can get the numbers. I mean, literally type the word choose, like 19, then word choose, then the number 5. In Google, search bar, for real. Okay, full house. I did this already, you know, in your other notes. So if you watch the other videos, how many, I don't want to repeat this. How about let's do something more interesting. How about a flush? We're going to count the number of ways to get a flush. Um, okay, so what does a flush look like? It has five cards, and they're all the same suit. Say they're all lovey, lovey-dovey. And then, you, you know there can't be a pair here because they're all, like, the same suit. So if there's a two here, there can't be another two anywhere else because there's only one two of hearts in the whole deck. So we have the denominations are just five different denominations. Um, like, um, ace, four, and seven. This is an example of a flush. Okay, so it's easy to count this. Step one is what I did. I chose the suit. There's four suits. So step one is to choose the suit. And that can happen in four choose one ways. And then exactly my next step, you saw me do it. I chose the five things from what? There's 13 denominations. I need to choose five of them. This couldn't be any easier, could it? Choose five of the 13 demons nations denominations and we can do that in 13 choose five ways 
13 choose 5. I calculated this earlier. Um, is 1287. So, well, looks to be 1287 for, which is 5148. But then you go to Google or something because you're a cheater and you're like, Google says it's 5108. And you're, you realize that your answer is wrong. It's larger by 40. Well, that's true. Some of the flushes that I just counted aren't boring flushes. They're much better than that. They are. They are. Do I have that picture here? Uh, all with hard hands. Okay. From the handout two days ago, a flush looks like this it's boring but there's a freakish large number of these straight flushes not freakish actually 36 and I'll tell you why and then there's four extremely special flushes that look like this so when I pick when I chose five of the 13 denominations it's possible that I could have chosen these five like that's that would be great you know that's not boring that's not as boring as so how many of these hands are there well we think about this think about this um boring just straight flushes ace two three four five or two three four five six or three four five six seven yada yada all the way down to the tenth type sorry the ninth type a nine ten jack queen king and then we think about this. If this is on top, how many choices for the bottom? Well, we can have all of those of hearts, all of those of diamonds, all of those of clubs, and all of those of spades. So these are four ways. Ways. Four ways. Yada, yada, yada. Four ways. So that's a total of how many lines do we have? Well, nine lines, first, second line, third line, dot, 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 ninth line. A total of four times nine equals 36 straight flushes. So we actually just did another homework problem right now, or possible quiz problem. We've just counted all the straight flushes. This is how you count them. There are 36 five-card poker hands that look like this. And then over here, how many rows do we have? Exactly one row. It's very special. Ten, Jack, Queen, King, Ace. And then they can come in all hearts or diamonds or all clubs or all spades. So there are four possible royal flushes. So remember, you are dealt five. There's two and a half million possible poker hands. Of that two and a half million, only four of them are this. So you will never be dealt a royal flush. I mean, like, virtually never. You're going to live multiple and multiple, multiple lives like the Buddha, and you'll still not get a royal flush. I talked to the Buddha the other day. He never got a royal flush. They, sorry, never got a royal flush. Okay, so, boom. So we just did three different math problems. The number of flushes, number of straight flushes, and number of royal flushes. We actually didn't do the flush yet. We have to, so to this answer, we subtract the 36 straight flushes and the four royal flushes. And if we subtract those from this number, so the number of regular old flushes is equal to that number minus 40, which is 5,108. And that's what the internet will tell you, I'm hoping. Um, so when you, if you were to cheat and find this answer online. So that's it. Okay, next one. Blue. So if a king or a queen uses the bathroom, the toilet. <laughs> so I was going to make a royal flesh joke. Um, but, you know, 
you won't turn your microphone on and laugh, so so it's okay. It's not funny. A royal flush from a royal toilet. Statistic. That's a word. How many ways to rearrange it? This is too simple. This is the homework due tomorrow night. By the way, never skip the homework due on Friday, Friday night. This is going to be how many ways to rearrange banana. That's all it is. We count the number of letters. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine letters. We say how many S's. I count two S's. How many T's? Like one, two, three T's. How many A's? There's one A. I's and C's is left, right? I's, one, two I's. And then lastly, one C, and then we're out of letters. Okay, so and then we do the math. Nine factorial over two factorial times three factorial times one factorial times two factorial times one factorial. And this is uh, use your calculator very carefully. And you'll get um, one thousand, wait, one fifteen thousand one hundred and twenty ways. Yeah. So I often get asked, do I need to write this for full credit on the quiz? Damn it, yes. Okay. <laughs> Don't just write that. And then the other question, do I need to write the ones even though the ones don't do much? Yes. Damn it, yes. For full credit. Um, okay. So, license plates. How many different license plates are there if it must include four letters and three numbers? Repetition is allowed. Slots. We draw slots. Always for this problem. So we have seven slots, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, first I want to give the wrong answer. Um, the wrong answer is to read this question and say, well, four letters. And then, so the wrong answer, so I always get to give the wrong answer. Um, it would be, well, four letters and three numbers. Repetition is allowed. Oh, I get it. So 26 choices, 26 choices. 26 choices, 26 choices, and then um, three numbers. Well, numbers are 0 to 9, so 10 choices, 10 choices, 10 choices. This is wrong because the four letters aren't necessarily first. So that's the wrong answer. So what's the right answer? Well, we need to think about it. I don't know where they're going to go. I mean, a license plate can look like, um, uh, I don't know, like I need to have four slots with letters. That's, I'm going to say I'm going to put the letters in the uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Say I chose those four slots for the letters, and then I have 26 choices, 26 choices, 26 choices, 26 choices. Like I can have Z, Q, um, Z, uh, P, and then 6, 4, 8. That's a license plate, right? So I need to first choose where I put the damn letters, then pick the letters, and then I don't need to choose where the numbers go because if I choose where the letters go, then I'm done. So step one. And by the way, there's always alternate ways to get the same correct answer. This is not an alternate way. This is just a wrong answer. <laughs> okay. Um, so step one, we're going to choose four of the seven slots to put letters there. And how many ways can I do that? Well, there's seven slots. Choose four of them, and that's 35 ways. Step two, I'm going to have to choose four letters. Now I, have, I know those slots. Those are like where I have the boxes. So choose four letters. Well, 26 choices, 26 choices, 26 choices, 26 choices. This can happen in 26 to the fourth ways. Step three. 
choose the numbers. Choose three numbers. Well, 10 choices, 10 choices. So zero is allowed. So 10 to the third ways. So I have these three numbers, 35, 26 to the fourth, 10 to the third. So the total equals 35 times 26 to the fourth times 10 to the third, which is a ginormous number, 15 billion, 994 million, 160,000. 15 billion. It's a lot of, that's a lot of, that's a lot of license plates. <laughs> that's larger than the population of Earth. So yes, this is a good system. If everyone had a car, we wouldn't run out of license plates. Um, how many different license plates are there if it must include four letters and three numbers and repetition is not allowed? So step one is the same. Step one is still the same. We're going to choose those four slots for the letters. And all that changes now is step two and step three. I'm going to choose four letters. And so before I had 26 choices for each of these boxes, but now I have 26 choices, but then 25 choices, and then 24 choices, and then 23 choices. So 26 times 20 times 24 times 23. And then we want to choose three numbers. And that can happen in 10 ways, nine ways, eight ways. And then if we multiply all these up by multiplication principle, Multiplication principle says that, um, oh shit, I didn't do it in my notes. Um, so a smaller big ass a number um, than this. We have less choices now. So obviously it's going to be a smaller number, but it's still going to be a big ass number, but it's going to be smaller than this big, big ass number. Um, I just didn't do it. Um, Okay, last question that could be on the type, this type of in-class quiz that's going to happen somehow at home. We toss a couple times. Each time the head or tail is recorded, how many possible outcomes are there? Draw eight slots. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And um, there's two choices for each slot. Etc. Two choices. So the total is two to the eighth power, which is two hundred and fifty six ways. Cool, yo. How many ways can we get exactly four heads? Well, we need to know where those heads are. I don't have to do any choices anymore at that point. Um, Four, five, six, seven, eight. I want to choose four of the eight slots to put eight in. And that tells me just saying our reasoning tells us the method. Well, there's eight slots. I choose four of them. That's 70 ways, says Pascal's triangle. And that's it. <laughs> it's not even a coin problem. It's a where do they go problem. There's 70 ways to pick the four locations of the heads. Do I have to count um, where the tails go? No, you know where the tails are going. They're going wherever the heads ain't. Okay, so 70 ways to get exactly four heads. How many ways can you get at most six heads? So on this word at most, we think cases. And I'm going to, we think about cases. At most six heads means you got like no heads and eight tails, one head and 
with seven tails, two heads, and blah, blah, blah. That's so many cases. So let's do the universe and count the opposite. The universe is the all possible outcomes. And we already tabulated that. As of you, it was 256 ways. That's how I remember flip a coin eight times. So we want to think about, again, it doesn't matter what I call E and what I call E prime. Let's do the opposite of what we did last time. Last time we called this thing to be E prime. Let's call this thing E itself this time. E is at most six heads. Well, then E prime will be the opposite of that. So you did not get at most six heads. So then, you know, you got, um, you got more than six heads, right? You got seven heads or eight heads, right? So seven heads and one tail, or let's put it in parentheses, or you got and zero tails. That's only two cases. And it's really easy to count. Only one way to get that. I mean, just fill every slot with heads. How many ways to get here? Well, it depends where the tail goes. Either I can put the one tail there, or the one tail there, or the one tail there, or the one tail there, et cetera, et cetera. There's eight ways to do this. So we didn't even need to do any math to count that. So the size of E prime is equal to eight plus one, which is nine. So in green, for the money, the size of E, which is a, what the question was asking, is the size of the universe minus size of the complement of E. So we have 256 minus 9 is 247 ways to get most six heads when you flip a coin eight times. So this is kind of like, I guess, the hardest type of question that can be on the quiz because it involves some thinking outside the box as opposed to just boring computation. And hi, everyone. Last question is following. When is the Chapter 5 math quiz? Next week, it is. Um, I'm going to email it to you. I don't know how I'm going to time you for it. Um, and will Pascal's triangle be given on it? Yes, it will. Um, yeah. Yeah, I really don't know how we're going to do this. Me and Beck are discussing it, too, with others, so we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Maybe you'll just take the quiz, and then I'll, like, all at the same time, and then, like, I'll say, email it to us by, like, this time, and, and you'll see it till then. Well, let me turn off the recording, because I think I'm just thinking to myself. Um, stop sharing. Oh, Goo, you're in here. Hi, Goo. Uh, stop the recording.